Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to look at a blog post called Professor Snipes Magic Potions. You can access it on my blog, the web address will appear on the video clip. Okay, so let's look at the context of this challenge. You've probably read the series of Harry Potter books and in these books Professor Snipes is the Magic Potions teacher and for this challenge we're going to look at some of his um, favorite potions. Now, we're going to focus on three potions, the Invisibility Potion, the Aging Potion, and the Poison Antidote Potion. Okay, now, all these potions are saved into text files, and we're going to use a Python script to actually read the content, content of the text file and display it on the screen. I'm going to make this a bit larger. And you can see here the three text files, um, Invisibility Potion, and you've got all the steps required to create this potion. You've got the poison antidote.txt file with another set of instructions, and you've got the aging potion file with another set of instructions. Okay, now we've started the code for you on this blog, um, and what we've done is a welcome banner. And then we've got a function, the function that will be used to read the content of the text file. Now our main program starts here and all it's doing is that it's displaying the name of the potion and then it's reading, it's calling the functions we've created, read potion file. So it's going to jump onto here, it's going to open the invisibility potion.txt file, it's got to match exactly the same file name as we've got here and the R, the R parameter means it's going to read it in read-only mode. And then it's going to start looping through the text file one line at a time. So for each single line of the text file, it's going to print the step and it's going to print the step number. It's then going to print the line of the file and then it's going to increment the step by one. Once it's finished, doing this for every single line of the text file, it's going to close the file. And that's it. Let's try this code. When I run it, I've got the banner, which is created on line 3 to line 6. I've got the subheading, which is created on line 26. And then I'm calling that function here, read portion file, which is looping through every single line of the text file, but it's adding the step number before every line. Step one, step two, step three. So that was not part of the text file. If you look at the text file again, we only had the instructions here and they are matching. Add two garlic cloves to a white marble mortar is the first step and so on. Okay, so let's go back to the blog post to see what we are required to do. Our challenge consists of adding a menu to this code to let the user decide which portion to display on screen. Based on their choice, the program will open the relevant text file and display the recipe on the screen. So we're going to do this first and then we will be looking at the extension task. Okay, so let's go back to our code in full screen mode. Excellent. So basically, um, here we're going to add a little menu to let the user decide which portion to display. So um, I'm going to ask the user to choose an option using an input statement. And I'm going to display which portion would you like to display. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say choose an option between one and three. Now I need to let them know what are the three options. Um, so I'm going to display a little menu at the top. So I'm going to use the print statement for that. Print option one is invisibility portion. Option two. Oops, I need a switch mark here. Is going to be a poison. antidote potion and option three 
will be the aging cushion. Okay, so if I test my code here, it's going to display the three options we've got, and then it's going to ask me which one do I choose. So let's try that. The three options and then the question. So I'm supposed to answer, for instance, question answer one, and then it's going to carry on from here. Now, because I took option one, uh, for now it's just reading the invisibility portion. So I need an if statement here to compare, to decide which portion to actually display. So if the user option, so the user chose option one, so I'm comparing the option variable to the value one. In that case, I will print this portion here. Okay. Then I can do elif. So if they didn't choose option one, maybe they chose option two. And in that case, I'm going to print a subheading the same way as I did on line 32. Uh, this is the poison antidote. Um, and then I will have to write a function to actually read the content of that text file. I haven't done that yet, so I'm going to create my third option, and I'm going to copy and paste here. If option is three, I'm going to display the aging portion. Um, and I'm actually going to have another option. If they didn't type either one, two, or three, I'm going to say print invalid option. Okay, so at this stage, um, I've given the choice. I know what portion they want. Um, I just need to um, change my function here to make sure that it's going to read the right text file. Now, I've got two options here. I could either create three of these functions. One that would say read invisibility portion file. One that could say read antidote portion file and so on. Um, but the code would be very, very similar because actually the only thing that is going to change in this code is the text file I'm going to open. So instead, I'm going to change the code here and I'm going to pass the text file as a parameter. Um, which I'm going to call file name, and whatever the parameter I'm going to pass, I will use that to open the text file, which means that when I call my function, I will have to pass a parameter, uh, which is the name of the text file, invisibility dash pushing dot txt. Um, which means I can now use the same function for all my options. I need to make sure it's lined up properly. Uh, but this time I'm just changing the name of the file I want to open. And it's got to match the name of the file um, of my text files. And Python is case sensitive. Poison antidote. And then I'm going to copy that line of code again, this time for option three, and the text file this time is the aging portion. So I'm going to remove invisibility, replace it with aging. Now I should be able to test this and see if it works. So let's run this code. Uh, which portion would you like to display? I'm going to display option two for change. And this is showing me the poison antidote portion, uh, where it says crush three grams of dried dandelions. Let's make sure I've got this right. Uh, if I check my text file, crush three, gram of, three grams of dried dandelions. Perfect. I'm going to do a bit more testing just to see that every single option is working. So I'm going to try option one. Yes, that's fine. Invisibility portion. And I'm going to try option three as well, which should be the aging portions for metal leaves. Perfect. And I'm going to do one more test. What happens if I type something else, not one, two, three, either some letters or a number like number five. Um, and it says invalid options. Perfect. So everything is working as I wanted. Um, what have I learned from this? Um, I've learned how to do a basic menu. I think we already knew how to do that. 
um, I've learned how to check which option the user wanted um, chose basically and then mainly I've checked I've learned how to pass a parameter to a function so I can reuse the same functions but with a different value. So the find name here will take the value that I'm passing in those brackets here. And finally, I've learned how to read the content of a text file one line at a time using a for loop. Okay, well, have a go at this and then we're going to look at the extension task. Now at this stage, you may prefer to pause the video and complete the code up to that stage before looking at the extension task. Um, let's assume you've done this and I'm going to go back to the blog um, to see what happens here. Now if I scroll down on the blog, um, the extension task is asking me to add an extra text file to, st to store this new potion, babbling beverage. And this is a potion that causes uncontrollable speaking of nonsense. And here are the steps. So I'm going to um, copy those steps and I'm going to go back to my code here. I'm going to display that again in full screen mode. And over there, I've got my three portions. I can actually add another text file. So I'm going to press that plus button here. It's going to be called babbling portion dot txt because it's a text file. Enter. And in this, I'm going to paste all the steps that I copied from the blog. Here we go. So I've got seven steps in here. Um, and I'm going to go back to my code. Um, I need to go back to the left here, to the main code. And um, I won't have much to do here. All I've got to do is add an extra option to my menu. This is option four, which is the, the bubbling portion. And which option would you like to display? Which portion would you like to display? One, two, four. And then I'm going to add an elif statement um, after option three. I'm going to copy all of this code here and paste it underneath. Now on the video, I'm using Control C, Control V to copy and paste. I'm changing the heading and I'm changing the name of the text while I'm passing as a parameter. And that's pretty much it. So I should be able to run this code. And I should now have an option to choose option four. And you can see the seven steps of option four, the babbling portions. That's it. We've done the complete challenge here, including the extension task. I'll let you have a go at it. And if you want to, you can actually create an extra file of your choice. This time you may want to write your own portion and change your menu, change your input question here and add an extra um, elif statement to cater for any new portions you create. Enjoy! Goodbye for now.